Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Today I'm going to review Tati Thompson's latest novel, Far From the Light of Heaven. Thank you to NetGalley and the publisher for providing me with an arc of this book so I could read it and review it on time for once. <laughs> All these opinions are of course my own. So Far From the Light of Heaven is a space opera novel, though I personally would like to pitch it more as a locked room murder mystery. It's just that the murder is super sci-fi and the locked room is a spaceship. And that is why I really wanted to read this book. I have enjoyed previous things by Tati Thompson, but this is murder mystery in space, and I love that. The description of this book definitely reminded me of Six Wakes by Murr Lafferty, which is one of my favorites. So I went into this with high and happy expectations, let's say. So this story begins with a ship full of colonists headed out on a 10-year cryosleep journey to their destination, a planet called Bloodroot. The journey is fully automated, they go through a bunch of jump gates, and they arrive at Bloodroot. But when they do, the captain, a woman named Shell, is woken up and discovers that a bunch of people have been gruesomely murdered on her ship, and the ship's AI, Ragtime, is uncooperative and possibly damaged. And then Bloodroot sends an investigator, what they call a repatriator, a man named Rashid Finn. They're not going to allow anybody off the ship and onto the colony planet until they've determined what exactly happened, because what if it was a contagion or something like that? So Finn shows up to help investigate what happened. And then another person also arrives, the Lagos Space Station governor, a man named Lawrence. Um, Lagos had some responsibility for the ship when it went through its last jump gate, so of course they're interested in finding out what happened. But also Lawrence has a personal history with Shell. He's kind of like her godfather, and he had worked very closely with her father before his disappearance. So he comes out to the ship as well and brings along his daughter, who might be partly alien. So now we have a bunch of vulnerable people who are mostly strangers to each other on a ship where a murderer is still loose and they don't know how or why any of this is happening. And then a wolf appears out of nowhere. I really enjoyed the core story of this book, and I think it's a great story for people who enjoy murder mysteries and classic detective fiction. It was inspired by The Murders in the Room Morgue by Edgar Allan Poe. And like I said before, I picked this up for all the right keywords. It reminded me so strongly of other um, mysteries in space that I had enjoyed, and I got what I expected. It did not disappoint on that level. It is definitely a claustrophobic, baffling mystery in space where all the complications and stressors are increased and where there are different environmental conditions. I also really enjoyed the world building and the hints of historical events in this world. I really hope that this is the beginning of a series or that Tati Thompson writes more in this world, even if they're just unconnected mystery novels. I would really enjoy seeing him take this world building even further and exploring more aspects and more corners of the world. But I am going to admit that I felt some disappointment with the depth of the story and how I felt like some elements of it could have met up and connected a bit more tight but didn't. Mostly I felt there was a disconnect between character development, world building, and the actual plot. Like I felt that what we were told about the characters should have been more on display. We should have seen them doing some things that we didn't see them doing. Or I felt that um, some of the world building wasn't established well enough or quickly enough to make some of the plot elements more interesting to the reader. So for example, we're told that Finn is this like prodigy investigator. We're given a lot of his backstory and what he's struggling with but I don't think we really see him finding answers on the ship. I didn't feel like he was making clever deductions or figuring things out. I felt more like we were in his head as he was wallowing about his personal problems and he and everybody else just managed to survive long enough for the answers to be revealed to them. The jump gates are another example. I was really interested in this aspect of the world's technology, and it's explained a little bit, but then there's this big decision that's made involving a jump gate. And at that point, I didn't feel like I really understood how they worked, how they were controlled, or who commanded them. And so there's this kind of aha moment with a jump gate, but I didn't really 
feel it. I was just like, oh, that's a thing that somebody can do. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying here is that while all the individual parts and elements of this book are good and they make sense and it's all internally consistent, I just didn't feel like the sum of those parts was more. It didn't stitch together and connect in the depth that I wanted it to. But what this book does well, in my opinion, is the murder mystery. Those classic questions of who did it and how did they do it and why. There are very satisfactory answers given, even if I thought there could have been more character development or more build up to those aha moments. On the whole, I enjoyed this book. It was fun and it was what I wanted to read in the moment. I will definitely keep picking up Tati Thompson's books because I think his style, his voice, and the flavor that he brings to science fiction is something new, and that's what keeps me coming back and picking them up. If you have read Far From the Light of Heaven, or if you want to, please leave me your comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this review, and I'll be back to talk to you again soon, and until then, bye!